On this video we're going to create the ship sim, but just before getting into it, there are a few concepts that have to be explained. In Godot we have scenes that represent what we know as game objects and stages. Now, a scene is composed of a group of nodes. And there is one important rule, a scene has to have a root node, or as I prefer to call it, a main node. And all the other nodes are going to be children of it and they as well have children. Now, each of these nodes have different functionality or behavior. For instance, this one right here is a rigid body, which is affected by physics, so it has a velocity, a gravity affecting it, and so on. This one is a sprite, which allows us to display a sprite. And finally, we have here a collision shape, which defines the shape of a rigid body. Now in Godot, there are a lot of different nodes for UI, 2D games, 3D games, and much more. And we will be looking into them as we need them. Now, as you might already figured, the ship will be a child node of this node. But instead of creating it here, we are going to create it on a different scene and then we will instantiate it here. And this is the kind of things that are better to see them in action instead of just explaining them. So let's get right into it. To create a new scene, click on scene, then new scene. And for the main node of this scene, since this is going to be the ship scene, we will use the node name area 2 d which as its description says, is meant for general purpose area detection making it really convenient since later on we will detect collisions with lasers and enemies. So click create and I'm going to rename it ship. I'll hit Ctrl S to save it and we will save it under the scenes folder as ship.tscn. Now that we have the base node of the ship, we will add another one to display its sprite. I personally like to have all the nodes names lowercase, so I rename it sprite lowercase. You might already know that each node has different properties. An area 2D node has properties like gravity and layers, and a sprite node has properties like texture and an offset. To assign the texture of this node, click where it says null, and the texture we're looking for is under the sprite folder name ship and we can now see it here as well as a preview over here now an area 2d node is in charge of detecting collisions but we haven't defined the shape it will detect collisions from and this node doesn't have a property to define its shape and that is because this node rely on other nodes to define its shape so let's add another child node and we will add a collision shape to the. You'll see that there is a warning here. By clicking on it, it will tell you that a shape must be provided in order to make this node work, which makes sense. So for its shape property, I will assign a new rectangle shape. And you'll see that we have now this transparent blue rectangle visualizing our rectangle. We can resize it by using these two handles here. And make sure not to use this, because these are meant to scale the node, and that doesn't work pretty well when it comes to collision detection and physics. I'll hit Ctrl Z to undo it, and I actually want to precisely set the dimensions of the shape. And we can do so by clicking on the property value, then edit, or by clicking this arrow here. The size of this sprite are 32 by 32. And since this is asking us for the extension, I'll set it to 16 by 16. And there we have it. I'm going to rename this node to shape. And we don't want the shape to start at the top left corner. We want it in the middle bottom over here. If we try to move the shape by dragging it, you'll notice that we move only the shape node instead. And we can avoid this behavior by selecting the main node and then hitting this icon here, which will make sure that its children are not selectable. And now we can move it. 
but I want to be precise here, so I will set its position manually. So for the position property, I will set its exposition to 182, which is half of the width of the game view, and the Y to 280. And we have it horizontally centered and not two at the bottom of the view. We can run this scene by hitting this icon here, which will play the current scene we are editing. If we play the whole project by clicking here, it will run the main scene we set for this project, which is the stage game, and we don't have the ship in there. And that is when instantiating becomes really handy. To instantiate a scene, we just have to right click on the node we want to instantiate the scene in. Then click Instant Child Scene, and in this case we want to instantiate the ship. And there we have it. You can tell when a node is an instance of a scene for this icon. If we click on it, it will show us a few options. Editable children will allow us to see and edit the children of this instance. Keep in mind that any changes done to this instance won't affect the original scene, which is what instantiating is all about. We can also load it as a placeholder, which will place the node in the scene, but it won't work at running time because it's just holding the place for the instance and is expecting to be instantiated manually from us by code. If we run the project, you'll see that it doesn't show up. We can also discard this node as an instance, so it won't be attached to the original scene and it will be like we have created the node here. And last but not least, we have an option to open the original scene, which is quite handy. I'm going to disable load as placeholder so we have it working normally. And that's gonna be it for this video. Now that we have the basics out of the way, on the next video we will make the chip follow the mouse horizontally. So see you on the next one.